Hello, ladies and gentlemen. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to properly personalize cold emails without sounding like an absolute robot. But with that being said, let's just get right into it. Now, there's three key points that I want to go over in this video. Number one, what not to do when it comes to cold email personalization. Point number two, how to use clay.com and Claygent. Uh, you don't have to use clay in order to personalize. We don't have like any partnerships with them or anything, but it just makes it convenient and it doesn't cost you anything if you do it the way that I'm going to show you. So, you know, there's really no reason to use it. And then also the truth about cold email personalization in general, which isn't what you think it is. So, you know, let's just go and get right into it. Now, here is an example of really bad personalization. And this is pretty much what everyone talks about when they talk about cold email personalization. Now that looks like, hey, George, I saw you graduated NYU in 2003 with an MBA. That's great to hear. By the way, are you aware that you could be ranking on the top of Google for your niche in just three months with a good SEO strategy? Do you mind if I send over a quick 10 minute video explaining how you could do this? Now, the problem with this email right here is this has absolutely nothing to do with the context of the conversation, right? Like it just, like the, the concept of personalizing an email based on information on LinkedIn makes absolutely no sense like at all, right? Because you're sending somebody an email about a business subject. Keep in mind, this is a cold email. You don't just approach a person you've never spoken to as if you're friends. Right. I could say this to a friend, you know, I said, you know, I know you graduated, like whatever, just in a casual conversation, but to a cold prospect to come in and just mention some completely irrelevant detail and then continue to talk about your offer is just not going to work for most people. Right. And fact of the matter is that most of society nowadays knows about ChatGPT, knows about all of these like AI tools, and they're going to know that you made this email with an AI and they're going to not want to read it because of that exact fact. Right. I can express the countless times that I've been on a call with someone doing cold email or someone who's looking for cold email and I'll show them this and they'll be like, oh, my God, every time I get those emails, I never respond to them. OK, so that's number one. Just do not do this. It's that simple. Right. It just isn't helpful. If that line isn't actually adding any relevance to your email, there is no reason to do it. OK. Now let's talk about how to do it properly. And I'm going to show you guys one example. Right. The reason why I say one example is because. There's really an infinite amount of ways to personalize with AI, uh, but I'm going to give you guys just one example. Now, how to use Clay and Clayagent. For those of you who don't know, I'll give you guys like a quick rundown on Clay. Clay is basically like a Google Sheets type software where, and this, this is how it looks, and I'll show it in a little bit, but it's a Google Sheets type software, which has a bunch of integrations with a bunch of different lead generation tools. Like, for example, uh, for those of you guys who might be in e-com for whatever reason, uh, if you guys have ever done outreach in e-com, you know there's a platform called Store Leads, right? Now, Store Leads, as the name suggests, is a platform with leads uh, of e-commerce brands. Instead of going on Store Leads, doing an export, and uploading it directly into Clay, you can directly access Store Leads right through Clay, right? And you can see right here, if you go to use cases like list building, for example, you have access directly to Phantom Buster, Google Maps, Salesforce, LinkedIn, Store Leads, Apollo, Google. We're going to get right back to the video, but just give me a minute to tell you about Borks.io. For those of you who are unfamiliar, Borks.io is my lead generation agency that functions completely on a pay per qualified call basis, meaning you only pay us when we book you a qualified call with a prospect that wants to work with you. This is the same thing that we've done for Adam. We booked Adam nine qualified calls in just two weeks. Brandon, seven qualified calls in 10 days. We, we managed to get Jay six meetings and 37 interested prospects in 72 hours. We managed to get Damien five to 10 calls a week. We took Kareem from signing an extra three clients and extra eight clients. Tolly, we got Tolly one to two clients a day. Michael, 17 meetings in two weeks. Right here, 50 positive or 50 interested prospects. 48 interested prospects, 169 interested prospects, 99 interested prospects. On here, 50% of all responses, interested. Right here, 12.5% 12, 12 of all interested responses, interested. 16%, 22%, 29%, 61%, 11%, 27%, 8%, 27%, 13%. This is one of our calendars. Boom, a bunch of meetings. Right here, brand doing 100 to 300K a month. Right here, another brand doing 50 to 100K a month. Right here, another brand doing 10 to 50K a month. Right here, 5 to 10 headcount company. Right here, 16 interested prospects, 21 interested prospects. This is the case study of Jay Jones that I showed above. Right here, 
50 to 200k a month right here 20 to 50k a month right here 20 to 50k a month another 500k per month plus boom a bunch of meetings here's another one fifty thousand dollars current mrr right here a hundred thousand dollars current mrr 50 to hundred thousand dollars mrr right the point is is we know what we're doing when it comes to cold email if you want more qualified sales calls on a paper qualified call basis, meaning if we don't get you calls, you do not pay us, then book a free outbound audit below. All we're going to do is discuss your offer, how your business works. And if it makes sense, we're going to give you an offer. Worst case scenario, you're going to get 30 minutes of completely free advice at no charge. Best case scenario, we're going to book you a ton of meetings and you're never going to regret it. But with that being said, let's get back to the video. And Google is like search results, not just Google Maps. And there's so many different things that you can do with Clay. And all of this comes into the fact that you also have the availability to use AI and web scrape all through one software. Okay. Now, I know it sounds like a lot. If you guys haven't heard of Clay before, then, you know, it's probably a little bit confusing, but I'll show you guys an example. Now, this right here is what a Clay table is. Right, so it's a table just like in Google Sheets where you can add different types of columns. You can see you can put formulas, URLs, emails, images, whatever. Now, what I've gone ahead and done here is I've created a prompt which will go on a website and take one of their case studies and return that company name. Now, why is this useful? So this right here is Smartlead. Um, again, no affiliation with these guys. I just love their tool. They're a great sending platform and that's what we use. Now, you can see right here that Smartlead has wind growth, which is a company that uses smart lead on it. So if I do wind growth, right, you can see right here, Renee Carl Lambert left a review for smart lead. And this is him right here. Okay. Now that has, that was completely automatic, right? I gave it the smart lead website and it returned to me the, you know, this guy's, this guy's company's name. Now, why is this useful? Say you have a massive lead list and in the lead list, you want to mention one of the prospects case studies with a tool like this, you can do that. Now let's just, let me give like you guys like another example, like for example, Atlassian. For those of you who don't know what Atlassian is, um, it is a, like a tool. They own like a bunch of different companies. They own Jira, they own Loom, they own like, you know, all of these different programs, all of these different software. So I'm going to show you guys how I'm about to come into here, simply click new row, put in Atlassian, type that in, and you're going to see that this was just queued. Now, what this is doing right now is it's scraping the information from the website. It's physically going on the website and downloading the code and then using chat GPT, which I put in my own API key for this and it's coming back and it's showing you now it just made a mistake. It does this sometimes because it's an AI. That's the other thing with AI personalization. Um, it's not perfect. Uh, obviously, depending on what you prompt it, it can be better, but you have to kind of play around with it a little bit. Here you go. So Lumen is one of the companies that it just found as a case study. Now, if I come to, if I come to Atlassian's website again, let's go back there and I type in Lumen, you'll be able to see that right here. My, or my lion Scarlet left a review from Lumen. She's the former senior director um, at this company and she left a review. Okay. Now, now that did, that just come, like completely happened automatically. Like you saw, like I didn't do anything like that was just the software doing it. Now, how this looks behind the scenes is I'm telling it to go to the company website and look for any testimonials that you can find. Okay. A testimonial will usually include an image, a headline and a body. And that's exactly how it is here. It's exactly how it is here. And that's why I mentioned that. Okay. Then I tell it, I need you to return the company names associated with the testimonials. If there are several company names, just return one company name. Now, for those of you guys who know Clay and know GBT and know AI in general, you know that how you prompt an AI makes the biggest difference. This right here is honestly a very simple prompt. If I was actually building out a campaign, I would take time to make this prompt like, like literally like, like blocks of like, it would look, it would look like a little novel, right? Cause you really have to be descriptive. The best way that I can describe AI is like, it's like a five-year-old kid. If you give it exact, 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 precise instructions, it's going to be able to do the task, but anything else than that, it won't be able to do that. Okay. So here you go. You see that I put, you know, just return one company and return Lumen. Now, why is this useful? Imagine the possibilities when I can go into my script and I can say something like, Hey Fred saw you were a decision maker at Atlassian Atlassian. I won't spell that right. And I'll show you guys an example of like how you could use this in a script. Right. And then 
sorry, decision maker. Atlassian. I can actually type in here. So let me just open up a Google Doc real quick. And I'll show you guys how I could write a script. You type this in, right? And you could say something like, hey, Fred, saw you were a decision maker at Atlassian. Or even better, hey, Fred, just curious. Why is it that Atlassian isn't sending any cold emails, right? With case studies like Lumen, you could easily launch a case study campaign and get a couple meetings booked in. I'd love to send over a free lead list of 5K leads, including the decision makers of companies just like Lumen. So this is obviously like, I just wrote this like off the dome. So obviously I'd make the script like so much better if I was actually writing like a real campaign. But as you can see that this is just gonna be turned into variables, right? So in reality, this is just gonna be first name. And then this is just gonna be in reality company name. And then this would just be case study one and so on. And like, this is how you can mass personalize. And already you can imagine that no one is going to think that this right here is a cold email campaign because of how personalized it is without being cringe, right? That's the only way I can put it. It's, <laughs> I don't even know why that's the word I wanted to use, but this is realistically speaking, going to do a lot better than you going and you doing something like this, where, you know, you're talking about like college or like whatever, like just it makes no sense. Okay. Now this one thing I just showed you in clay is honestly just touching the tip of the iceberg because you could do so much more. Now, like what I could do is I could create an entirely different prompt an entirely different GPT query and say something like, give me companies like Lumen. And then I could get a competitor. Let's say there's a competitor for Lumen called lemon or something. I don't know. I could say something like, Hey, I saw you work with Lumen. They're, they are a, use another GPT to like get like a short description, a cloud IT company. Um, are you aware that there's tons of other cloud IT companies you could start working with like Lemon and you can get in contact with them through cold email? Do you mind if I send over a free lead list, right? And when you start to really go into it and think about all the different possibilities that you can have with just personalization and just a couple of simple queries like what I just showed you, right? Like your scripts are gonna go like, crazy. I mean, like legitimately speaking, like no one's going to think they are cold emails. Now, the one thing I do want to mention is obviously if you are doing this, this does cost money, right? Like the chat GPT API does charge you. It's nothing significant. Those two leads are probably like, probably like a, not like a 10th of a penny. So it's not it's anything significant, but again, if you're, you know, verifying thousands and thousands and thousands of leads on like a bigger level, then you know, it could start to become a little bit expensive. Okay. Like I know we have some clients in the agency, um, where we are doing campaigns for them and we'll verify like 5,000 leads and it'll cost us like a hundred bucks, right? Cause we're doing like a very, very, very personalized campaign and that's what could happen. But even then, like it doesn't really matter because with 5,000 leads that personalized, you're going to book like at least 10, 20 sales calls. And at that point, you know, the math makes sense. So that's tonight. That's just like a quick example of how you can properly personalized cold emails without making them sound corny. But now we're going to talk about the last point, And this is going to be the truth about cold email personalization. Now the truth about cold email personalization is that it is really not required. It definitely helps if you have a small total addressable market, also known as Tam, but more often than not, just blasting a ton of volume is going to actually get you better results in the total, like in the total end day than any personalization. And the reason why I say this is typically when you personalize, it's not going to be like this, where every single company is going to have a case study and it's going to be perfect. Some of these companies won't have case studies. Some of these companies are not going to be applicable. And it's also going to be expensive if you do several levels of personalization and it really starts to become expensive. It starts to become time consuming. It starts to become very unscalable. Now, again, for every type of campaign, there is room in cold email, right? There's always a situation where this campaign is going to perform better than a volume campaign, 
But for the majority of times, just writing a good script with a good offer without personalization and just sending a ton of emails is going to get you better results because of pure mathematics, right? This script that I just showed you, the personalized one might be 50% more effective, but if you're sending 10 times more volume, it doesn't matter. You're still going to do significantly better. Okay. So that sums it up. Um, I hope you guys understand. I hope you guys enjoy the video. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to me, Twitter, Instagram, whatever, whatever is convenient for you. And uh, with that being said, if you guys liked, you know, like, and subscribe, this channel has about 1200 subscribers at the time of recording this. So we are still a small channel, but anyways, until next time.